This is Candace Stewart. I'm your host, or hostess, I always mess that up, of my podcast, Trade Secrets. And today I have, I always say this, but I really mean it, one of my favorite people, Teddy Serafian's with us today. And Teddy is like a multifaceted individual, as as we both are. But, but multifaceted in the sense that he's, you know, started out doing one thing, ended up doing something else. And one of the things I shine on, light on in the podcast is like, there is no one way to get somewhere <laughs> like in the journey the journey of life as it were so teddy thank you so much for being on the show Pleasure to be here and uh it's pretty unscripted as i mentioned and i'm it. gonna start with i think an important question where were you born santa monica really yes yeah i was born in santa monica um and i moved to westlake village when i was one years old you lived, walked <laughs> lived i walked over there and uh kind of this bubble community and oh it's nice yeah. under thousand oaks well, oh, it's like yeah, it's it sweet it's great you know um hung out there with tons of green belts and backyards and these hills and i skateboarded my life away out there and and i uh, lived there till i was about 17. oh okay moved back to the pacific palisades with my dad and they were they got Did, divorced they got divorced and then i hung out with him for a bit and then um uh well we're yeah. i'm gonna i'm All right, gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna jumping, I'm going too far ahead no no okay. no you're good you're good All right. so obviously uh, uh, we all love music. Uh, the podcast isn't about music per se, yeah. but we all love music. And I'm trying to shine a light on all the different people that help make it happen, whether it's a music supervisor or in your case with the, with the speaker company Barefoot that you're involved with and contractors, everybody that does something that helps music get made. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back. We're going to go back to when you were in grammar school and we're going to find out what was young Ted into besides skateboarding and, and girls? What were, what were you into in grammar school? Uh, I was always into music. Yeah. Um, when I was... Uh, I figured. You know, I, I wanted... At first, you know, it was, it was I wanted to play the trumpet, then, then the saxophone, then the trombone. My mom was like... You know, like, I hear this a lot about yeah. horn, by the way. Yeah. It's like um, I, I was just into it. And, but I always wanted a new... I just wanted the new instrument. And uh, my mom finally said, you know what? No, you're done. <laughs> and then, but I was always freaked out. So I'd sit upstairs um, with my- You have my, older siblings? Yeah, I do. I, I, family of five, I'm the youngest. I, oh my God, I'm the youngest of three four. Three brothers, a sister just above me, and I'm the youngest. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that, that explains a lot about our precocious personalities. Yeah. So did, did you, you got to listen to your older siblings' music? Uh, they weren't in music. They were into sports. I, yeah, my, my, one of my brothers said, never get into sports because you'll never be as good as we are. And if you are, we'll never admit it. <laughs> <Dick>. <laughs> I, said, I said, okay, I better, I probably love this I better get into music. So I, I would literally listen to the song remains the same. My buddy and I, we had our tennis rackets. Dude, I love that You one. know, and, and we just, okay, you pretend to be Jimmy Page and I'll pretend to be Robert Plant. We would just listen to that album over and over again and jump around. And finally, a music store opened up in our neighborhood and they had these guitars on the in Westlake Village or Palisade in Westlake Village okay and um one Christmas I got a a Gibson the Paul which is like a stripped down Les Paul oh I love it and uh, oh, I never knew you play guitar started playing guitar at the age of 12 oh wow and played you know in bands and yeah I was gonna say did you have a band in high oh, school oh god yeah what was the name of I the high school band I play um I don't know we had oh, come so on, many come on Give me a name. I think Just Us was one name. <laughs> there we go. It was awful. You know who was in the band with me was Jason Faulkner. Oh, I love him. Yeah. Jason Faulkner was in the band. Um, it wasn't called Me and Ted. <laughs> I know. Me right. and Teddy. It was uh, in, in Jason Bourne. Uh, uh, he has this big reggae band out there. That he Wait, Jason around. Bourne, like like Matt Damon's character Isn't that in The crazy? Bourne Identity? The real Jason Bourne. <laughs> 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 I know. When, when I'm like, did, did they know the real Jason? Wow. He was in the band. And then um, this guy, Tommy Laverty, who sang in 21 Guns and, and oh, went like toward. That. And he's a great singer. We were like this like little all-star group. And uh, we would play these like, shows. Like high school? We, yeah, we were kind of a hot little... Uh, and I was so nervous. I couldn't... I was socially... I was just... You know, I would playing the band but at school I just kind of hide and I wasn't Aww. good with women and Aww. I just was like hide and, He's, you're super and, hot now we we have video now yeah. but for a long time I didn't have video yeah. and I would say things like it is you can't see him but he's really hot but now they can see you so. oh god oh god <laughs> what's the time and then um so I did that for a while and um I decided I wanted to go to North Texas and study music oh. so I did that for a year and, um, Where, what city is that in? Uh, Denton, Texas. Denton. North Texas. It's, at the time, it was North Texas State University. Oh, okay. And I 
barely got in. I talked my way in. My grades were awful. So oh, I just BS Not my a good way student in. in high school? I, well, I didn't ever win. Yeah, well, that's me I too. Never, I never went. I just was on the, you know, um, I remember going to Palace High at the time and I get my car and I, go to, the, girls in I go to the beach. Yeah. No, I was never that guy. I was, I was always shy and I was never good with women. I, you I were had, just getting stoned? Where, where, where? I wasn't getting stoned nothing. I was boring. <laughs> <laughs> I played my guitar oh, right, right, and right, hid. Right. Sitting out on the beach by yourself. No, I just sitting there. The sun goes down. I, wait, I took four four. You only have to go to four classes. And I still wouldn't go. <laughs> but, um, so then I, um, I talked my way into college. I went to North Texas University. I took music and I took film and I took physics. Um, oh, I, I lofty. I, I failed film. Uh, <laughs> I failed music and I got a V plus in physics. Good for you. Well, you're smart. I you then, know that doesn't surprise me. And then I took the English class and I was literally, the, they, they put me in so like. So you're right brain. Wait, is that math? No, I, is I, math right brain or left I brain? I was in like the, re, the, 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 the <laughs> reject, say, the reject English. You like, can't say retard, but you I say know, reject. I, I, I quickly fixed that. You didn't catch that? It was awful. So, I can say what I want. It's my fucking podcast. I'm. <laughs> I cuss and shit too. <laughs> that was, so I did one year of that, and then um, a friend of I mine. I used to be really smart. Oh, you're yeah. so smart. You if you, you run all this stuff, and forget it. <laughs> but I don't physics. Know, am, I, am I going too fast? Or no, you, you're yeah, fucking perfect. So boring? physics. No, you're genius. So here I am. Uh, I did one year of school. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Scott K. Drummer, who now plays drums for the Commodores, also familiar. Called me up one day after I left college after one year. Um, so now you're the ripe old age of 19 or 20? Yeah, or? 19, 20. And he says, Oh, did you hey, surf? I need to ask that. No, I, I know. Dumbass. I'm not good in the I water. You put me in the water, the waves can be one feet, and I feel like I'm drowning. Oh, no. I'm, I'm, I think I was killed in a tsunami I'm in past life. I'm <laughs> heavily into surfing and surfed till I was probably 48. Yeah. My, yeah. my significant other, I my sucked, wife, but I'm my wife uh, Sylvia, surfed um, when she was in Brazil. When did you get married? I, we just married each other in Palm Springs one day. We just, it just happened. You been married for a minute? Huh? How long have you been married? Uh, a year? A couple of years, I'd say. Fuck, you know? See, I'm so out we of never, touch. I thought never, you were still your girlfriend. We didn't do it officially. I thought but you were still we're your married. girlfriend. Yeah. But um, no, it's all good. She is still his girlfriend. She served 37 foot waves. Yeah, I she never was did a freak. That's balls out. She's That's, a freak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, Women are courageous, by the way. We don't get, we don't get enough... Uh, people who believe that she yeah, is so good in the water she got there she's swim miles out it, there and well. she does she does uh what's that free diving and she does oh, all yeah, did, she can yeah, hold her breath too. six we've, minutes we've and, established that teddy's yeah. afraid of the water <laughs> oh i'm terrible so anyway um i get a phone call from my buddy um and he says hey i'm in this band called dallas brass and electric and they were like kind of the number one like club party band in dallas. dallas okay slightly <laughs> so he says come on out and play guitar. I, I said, love Texas, by the way. Uh, great. You know, so I got um, on a plane. Uh, my mom helped me buy an amp, a guitar, and I Aww. went out there. And I'm, I'm in the bus. He's got a VW bus, and we're driving to rehearsal. And he says, and I, and I, no, I said, And no, you're the singer or the guitar No, player? no, I'm just playing guitar. Okay. And, he, and he, I said, oh, how long do you need me for? Cause, and he goes, what do you mean? I you're said, in the band. I, I said, well, yeah, how, how long is this gig? He goes, no, you're in the band. You're, you're here. I'm... I would have never have come <laughs> because I'm such a, you know, my head's in the clouds. I'm like, oh, okay. So I show up to rehearsal and he's worried because I'm in the car playing the guitar and playing some other songs. And he's freaking out because he, he just put all the stuff in me like, Teddy's your guy. You can play guitar. Oh shit. Did you know any of their songs? I learned them on the way there. They were just, whatever, See? they're covers and there a couple of originals, you know, there we just go. dumb stuff. So, so I get over there and the band's there. You got this nine piece band total pro they got their pa the horn section are all like guys at north texas state lab oh, amazing. you know the the one o'clock lab band these are like serious guys the band Keith, sounds Keith, like our recordist has a master's in trombone okay that's yeah. a great instrument trombone yeah we um he's not there but the band sounded like <laughs> chicago oh and my I'm god here, and it's I'm, earth wind and fire meets chicago oh, and it, Teddy. it was crazy <laughs> so i know i'm i'm this rock guitar player and suddenly i gotta play funk Oh, I love it. That's awesome. And I'm literally had to quickly become a funk guitar player. Anyway, they heard me play. They liked me. I was in the band. I did it for two Make years. Make it to you, Mega Babe. Two years. And then I was so nervous on stage the first day, I sweated through my <laughs> my jacket. looked like I like dove in a pool. <laughs> And I was such a hand. I was so nervous. Aww. And then by the end, of, by the end of that gig, I turned into a total narcissist, like showboat. <laughs> I'm jumping on the banister, <laughs> trilling the guitar over my room, just like this total. <laughs> like, and then after two years, I remember. I remember I was watching um, North by Northwest, 
And oh, I'm playing this band. Scene I ever played in the sky. five to six nights a week for two years. Oh my my left hand was so full of like tendonitis, and I oh, yeah. I was so over it. And um, um, and I wanted to quit the band. But then this other band called like Boyfriend or Heart Thief. They were all like these heartthrob guys. Heart Thief. It was awful, right? <laughs> But they were good. The singer Heart was, in a box. The singer was off. So they go, hey, you want to be in our band? And and they had the crazy following and the most beautiful women. Oh, and, yeah. and I knew if I did that. Get a girl. I would know. I would have gone. I would have gone into the, like the pit. The, uh -oh. It would have been dark. Drugs? There were drugs? It would, oh, God. Dallas. I wasn't doing them. But there was, I mean, there were drugs everywhere. But I knew that that would have been the end of me. And you know I what said, I like to say? Don't do drugs. Give them to me. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I like that one. You can keep it. I, I said no. And I, I remember the last night I played in this band, this is kind of a... Wait, is this the Dallas band or is this the Heart Thief? No, no, I didn't play in Heart Thief. Okay. So the last night I was playing the band, I remember um, that I'm like, no, I just want to go back home and write. And, and the keyboard player of the band says, Teddy, I read, I read one of your letters you wrote to your sister. You're illiterate. You're, 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 <laughs> you're flat, not a writer. You're flat out illiterate. You want to be a screenwriter? <laughs> I like... I, um, and You're so, like, you don't understand. That's my colloquialism. I That's wanted, my dialect. I saw North by Northwest. I was so inspired. I'm like, I'm getting the film business. My family is in the film business. Yes, we are. I'm going to do it. And then, um, and so I told the, the band, I'm quitting. They're like, they wouldn't accept it. The last day in the band. Aren't you like Robert Altman's nephew? I am. My well, mom's. Just throw, I want to throw that in there. Just and sling that and right I want, on in there. Well, that's one reason why I left, uh, left uh, North <laughs> Texas State because I'm in this classroom and the teacher was like, I guess the chauffeur to Lady Chatterley's lover. Oh, I and love that, that was his claim to fame. Dude, but I love that film and I love D.H. Lawrence. Well, you know, but yeah, I don't remember that was the his claim. He yeah, was I don't a remember chauffeur. the chauffeur. Yeah, I don't he, remember him. He was a chauffeur. And then we're learning about Robert Altman and I'm thinking to myself, why am I here? I could be on a movie set with my uncle, yeah, really learning. learning how to direct yeah. instead of listening to this guy who had a bit part in this thing. Yeah, yeah. No offense to that teacher. We, we respect and love him. Fast forward, so now I'm at this last gig with Dallas Brass and Electric, and and I'm leaving the band, and and I was so sad. It was such a traumatic thing for me. I'm like, <laughs> and then I remember three women came up to me. Yeah. They they were models at the Paramount Modeling Agency. I don't know they had accents. They go, we were wondering if you would like to sleep with us. Now, I, and, <laughs> and I, yeah. I, I, yeah, and I'm like, you're young, you're are, healthy. What am I? doing i'm leaving this so uh, and i was so scared about the idea of like barely be with one woman correctly then panel three i said no it was like a scene out of seinfeld oh my god <laughs> like wait, wait. i'm, the back I'm the like truck. Back no the truck here. We've, we've gone from nervous sweater guitar player to swinging narcissist who's now met no, the no, chick, no, but, but doesn't did, have the confidence but no i wasn't to close the deal still wasn't i still wasn't that ladies guy I never really got there. Anyway, so I said no. I went back home. I was a late bloomer. I oh, totally late bloomer. I, you know, I said goodbye to my innocence in that band. That's oh, that's how late oh, yeah, bloomer yeah. I was. Anyway, I went back home, got a job at a pizza place, um, busing and doing all this stuff. I was like this like kind of local hero guy in in, in, in Dallas, and yeah. and now I'm back here and I want to write, and I'm learning how Where to. Where was the pizza place? Santa Pietro's Pizza in Westwood. Westwood. Ooh, and, Westwood. Yeah. Now we're in Westwood. Tony's. Uh, Different girls in Santa Westwood. Santa Pietro. Oh, my Different God. Different girls in Westlake Village. You know who worked You know who worked there was Kevin Sorbo and Greco oh, and like all these. Dude, I major, love him. And uh, who's the guy that sings? Richard uh, Greco worked there? Is that his name? Wrong name? Well, I, that's why I met Greco and Sorbo and then Tony, Dude, the I guy who Kevin does Sorbo. Hercules. Can Sorbo. I just say that I like action and figures who's, who are people? Who's the guy that sings All I Need? Uh... Is the air that I breathe in to love you that time? Yeah, who's a famous, he plays golf. He's a famous, um, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Jack Wagner. Oh, yeah, that guy. Jack, I, I train him. Anyway, so now here I am. I'm working and, and cleaning stuff and doing that and going home and trying to learn how to type. And and, uh, and this is, and yeah. this is uh, are, we, are we 90s? Are we, what? what oh, yeah. We're, what, we're, we're, I what think we're like we 89. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm writing. But you didn't here. think that maybe going, because you had studied film at college before, you didn't think that maybe taking screenwriting in school would be helpful? I didn't do any of that. <laughs> I didn't do any of that. Because, by the way, it's not nepotism. It's all about who you know. I say this all the time, and I don't think it's a bad thing. Because right. just remember, like in the last podcast I just did, 
my friend Ashley met Kelly Clarkson at the East Memphis Tomato Festival. Okay, yeah. you know it doesn't matter where, wherever you go, there you are. As Buckaroo and Bonsai says, so yeah. wherever you are, there you the go. potential is high for meeting someone that could be, help you along on your path or your goal or whatever. Don't don't look your nose down at it. So you're at the pizza place. Just what I'm saying. I'm at it the all pizza happens. Place. People are coming in. Well, you know, actually where it happened was uh, um, at the pizza place, all those guys were actors and they all went to this Vin- is the pizza place in Westwood. Yeah. <laughs> it, Vincent Chase acting workshop. They all went there. Mm. And um, and which was more of a meat market than a real say, acting place. Like, it was just all been. these g- hot guys, guys and hot girls. <laughs> and then I'm in the middle of it. But they had every script on the wall that you could imagine oh, I mean, I love they, it. aliens was there before it was released total real recall was there before it was released the fisher king like i would read oh, screenplay, king, after screenplay after screenplay well, that's after how you screenplay get good, you read screenplays and you figure out how to write screenplays but and then i told my mom i said mom i i need to learn i i like i'm a i'm, I'm a learner how do i do so, and she's you know my mom's like professorial type she goes it's very simple so she sat down with me read. for a day no day and she said here's how you punctuate here's how you do this and i was like, okay that's it got grammar. it i just care and now we have grammarly and but yeah I, now i became i became like you know in two seconds i learned how to type and i learned how to compose a sentence and grammar you know, and all this stuff i don't think yeah. i've ever told you this but i really love to write yeah and when i was younger i wrote like this children's book it never got published but right. I, I read this thing and so for me i imagine when i retire right besides i'll probably just get drunk every day and yeah. ride around in my golf cart getting oysters but yeah. i think I want to write and I want to take pictures. So I want to do something with my photography and writing. And I don't know if I have any idea. Well, you should. But I, lo- I do love to write. And yeah. I think that you're probably a very natural writer. Uh, we both speak, you know, I think I write the way I talk. Yeah. Which means I need to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> Which so I need one of those recorders yeah. to just transcribe what I say, but they never really transcribe right. No, you know what I mean. It's like the bad typos. Yeah. But anyway, so you're you're figuring this out, and you're going to be a screenwriter. And it's funny that you said that the script for Alien was on the wall because was Aliens. Alien. Oh. Aliens. Aliens. So, yeah, because Bill Paxton was in this class, and all, oh, and that's BP. how I knew Bill Paxton. I used to have what I called the BP yeah. factor. God yeah. bless his soul. My husband and I would only watch movies that Bill Paxton was in. Oh, he's he's the nicest. <laughs> The nicest guy. A great actor. Awesome dude. dude. True great lies actor. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, he's, he's ridiculous. The guy, he's, you know, he's going to be a spy. He's pretend like he's a spy with Jamie Lee Curtis. He's just... You know res- that movie? Yeah. He's great. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. And everything. And, and I'm he, so bummed he's, he's gone. I know. He's such, such a good person. Yeah, yeah. So, but what was the first screenplay? Or how did you... What was the first film you actually got involved in that you got to work on? So, here's a story. And so, what was the So, position? my dad, being a director... Um, um, I, 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 um, oh God, I'll back it up. I was, you know, my first couple scripts were just awful and, and nothing happened with that. Um, but then, um, my brother Darren, who's a film, who's a director, got the rights to a Nebula Award winning novel called- He doesn't go by Darren Starr, does he? No, Darren uh, Strippin. Uh, to, to, a, to a book called Man Plus, which is this really cool sci-fi book. I love sci-fi. And he had me write it. And that was the first time I really felt like my craft Aww. started happening. So I wrote it. Next you had thing, the flow. I knew Warner Brothers wanted it. Cooper Peters wanted it. The producers of Batman. And suddenly I'm like in these meetings. I'm 21 years old. Oh my God. And, and they're like, no, this is the real deal. Uh, now Try It Artist Agency wants to. They didn't want you me. to make the movie about the, uh, the it, band in it, Dallas? The script never. <laughs> we went out to like. Uh, to like some directors, um, Wolfgang Peterson stuff, but it just never See, those quite those are major got, meetings. Yeah, no, it was like a big deal. Are you still sitting on that screenplay? Uh, pff, no, it, that thing's been, it's at Warner Brothers in, in development hell. Oh. But my dad then got respect for me as a writer and he was working on this project for the Japanese called Solar Crisis. And, but he didn't like the screenplay and he pitched me the, my dad's an incredible storyteller oh, we love pitched this. me pitched me the opening he directed vanishing point he oh was i love that actor. movie he was an actor you've, you've seen him in bugsy and Gotti oh. and don juan de marco and the crossing guard oh i and, love dude and he, he's good looking like you uh, he's <laughs> different he's like he was a very heavy guy but he had this big voice and he always played the gangster you know um, wait what's your dad's name richard c serafian Dude, I gotta check this all out. I'm into yeah. it now. He'd always play that big Bill guy. Bill Paxton, you're gone. I'm gonna watch the movies with Ted's dad. <laughs> he's yeah, he's a great character actor. So he pitched me this opening in this great crazy way of telling stories. I'm assuming he's Armenian. I wrote he's 100 percent Armenian, speaks it. Love it. Um and 
So I, I, I say, hey, here's your opening. I wrote it through 25 pages or whatever. He goes, this is great. Oh. So he goes, keep going. So he was turning the pages into the producer under the fact that he was doing oh. the rewrite. Oh, and oh I acting like it was writing. his? Well, yeah, yeah. And then one, and it, the, the, it was a $30 million movie. It's crazy. It was greenlit. It was going. It was starting all these guys. And that's a low budget for movies, by the way. And back then, that was big. Oh, a big budget. Oh, okay. That okay. was like, wow. Because, you know, back then, the abyss was $40 million. That was a huge budget. So, oh, what um, a great movie. Yeah. And, to, to and I love sci-fi. So. so I'm sitting in this room. I'm looking at all, Richard Adley did Star Wars. All these, all my, you know, Heroes. things started to come alive. These huge models, which were like big as this room. And I can't believe it. I'm walking around sets that oh, I- Oh, like robotics? I, you mean that like I came up, No, creatures? you know, models. Like models of planets, models of spaceships. You know, like they built these things. And, um, and they would shoot them against green screen and blue screen, all that. Blue screen, actually. And I was in this What's table. the difference between blue and green screen? B blue was better for like models and stuff. Green screen, I guess they use an actors. Yeah. I have, I have I don't a fucking even clue. I know if they use blue screen anymore. I'm, I'm so out of it. It doesn't matter. Then my dad said at the table, it goes, by the way, this rewrite that just happened, my son just did it. And I'm 22 years old. Aww. And they look at me like, what the hell? This guy? Suddenly I became a co-writer of the movie. Now you're the hot kid. Now, um... Um, Hot kid writer. Yeah, the the script got great coverage, and and I get signed by this agent, Bruce Kaufman. And you make a little money. Jeff Field. I made a little bit of money, and next yeah. thing I know, I'm writing. And so now I'm writing scripts. I sold another one to Warner Brothers, and then I got another one, a bidding war that Steven Spielberg bought from what me. What was that? A film called William the Magnificent. William the Magnificent. And it was a, a circus. Uh, this boy in the circus. And kind of a crap, crap, this greatest story. And I remember I wrote the script, this script, this manager who wanted to sign me. Was it from a book or just from your head? From my head. I love yeah, just it. This, you know, and I, is there a little bit of Ted in this character? Oh, there's Ted in everything. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> Keep Ted out of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch out, here it comes. Yeah. And then, um, so, so. I um, smell weed Everybody right was like Does passing. smell weed but me? Uh, no wonder I'm starting to feel happy. Yeah, smells like weed. <laughs> I got no bidding more, sold the script. I'm in a room. I'm talking with Steven Spielberg about this project. Dude, and we love it. Yeah, you got to remember, you got to remember, everybody starts somewhere. I say this about yeah, music. Yeah. Yep. Steven had a first film. It, was it Jaws? No, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, Sugarland Express. Well, actually, he oh, directed right. uh, um, some of the um, some television. Um, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, but so uh, you're sitting in the and you're sitting in a room with Steven Spielberg. Spielberg, I, I'm saying I'm so nervous I can barely speak. In the room you have Lucy Fisher. Uh, you have all the biggest people Warner Warner Brothers and Universal bought it jointly because uh, um, Paul. Do they Ray, play well together when they do things like that? It was just the most <laughs> stressful thing. I'm in this room. I'm 26 <laughs> years old, and and all these big wigs like v, exec VPs and studio presidents and everybody wanted to be in the room. He comes off the set of Jurassic Park. Oh, oh and you like, know, little film. Who do you see directing this film? Because I want to make it. And I, I don't know. I, I Wait, Steven Spielberg asked you. Who do you see? And I said, well, what about you? He goes, no, I'm directing this film uh, next called Schindler's List. I won't have time. Oh, Jesus. And I'm like, Great oh, movie. I don't know. I didn't know what Schindler's List was. Yeah. And um, yeah, I thought it was the guy that made the elevators. But that's goes, another story. Out of all the movies we have, <laughs> the Flintstones, Casper, and he named a bunch. All of them. Yours is the one that's ready. We're going to make yours first. Mine was the only one that didn't get made. And William the what? <laughs> William the Magnificent. It's the only one thing. Rob Cohen attached himself to it. He directed Dragon and Fast and Furious for a second, but it just... Has it ever been made? No, no. It's just one of those tragic stories. So wait, what happened? This is going to lead the way into my barefoot sound world. I have no, I have no doubt, see, yeah. but I have a naive question. So mm -hmm. when a film gets kind of lost in, like you said, lost in development yeah. or whatever, it's you've already common. sold it. Oh yeah, you sold it. You've been paid. You've given the baby. You, it, you've given the baby up for adoption, and you can't talk to the baby the, anymore. In the, in the right? world of exactly, you, <laughs> you know, and you give. And this, the baby can't find its birth it's mother. Nine months of having this baby, <laughs> and then you give the baby, and then they start removing arms and its hair oh, and tattooing God. it, and you're going, "Don't do this." Oh, but let's put another tattoo and then let's pierce its, you know, nose. Don't hurt my baby. You're dying. <laughs> And that's what happens. And by oh. the time you're done, it's not even a baby anymore. They turn into a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh my oh, God. Wait. Okay, well, by the way, yeah. I know that it's hard. Well, you could probably see the analogy because yeah. you've crossed both worlds. But yeah. that's true for artists too, making a record. Like there's plenty of records that get shelved and yeah. never released until years and years later. Yeah. And, and artists, creative people such as yourself, 
how devastating to give up your baby. <laughs> It's awful. <laughs> and they don't do it. It's awful. You, the funny thing is about that, that when I got into that bidding war and sold it for Spielberg, at the time, I just got the job to write this, this funky comic thing called Tank Girl. I love that movie with Lori Petty so much. Yeah, you did that movie? I wrote it. Oh my God, I fucking love that movie. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> well, thank you. I fucking love that movie. It's a great movie. She's badass. I know. Dude, and She's then bad. we don't see her again until like Point Break. What yeah. happened to Lori Petty? I think, she, I think Point Break happened first. I don't fucking no? know. No? Okay. Maybe. But but I, so I love her. She's so were, badass. The studio, I, I was... Wait, you wrote Tank Girl. I wrote, I wrote Tank Girl. That makes so much sense, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was, will, you write a, will you write a movie for me? <laughs> I, <laughs> You're called Chair Girl. I remember <laughs> just like, just writing the craziest thing I could, you know, just... Dude, it was so cool the yeah. way they did that movie where you yeah. were kind of like in fantasy animation then not in real f i mean yeah if you haven't seen tank girl fucking watch it it's a great it's a great movie yeah you might want to do some uh you know <laughs> some hallucinogenics first yeah, no, that's a great movie it's a great job you know it, that was one of those things Cult classic that movie i was in the process of making the deal with the studio you know universal united artists and um and they were being kind of really tough with me on my price and I, I look back on it. It's like, Teddy, just shut your mouth and take the money. It's more mm. money you're, you're being. And I'm like, well, I want to get paid more. And, um, and at the time, right when they were negotiating my deal, it was I put in there that I just got in this bid, massive bidding war and sold my script to Steven Spielberg for a lot of money. Okay. And, uh, and they quickly came back and came up to put the price. Do we love this? And so now I'm on the set of this film that, that just got made for Miramax that I wrote. I'm writing. What's that called? It's called, it was originally it was called Road Flower with Christopher Walken. And um, we'll not, not Christopher Walken, not Christopher Walken. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> See, you did this to me because she makes fun of me because I do a really bad walk-in. But um, you know, with Chris Lambert, the Highlander. I love Christopher Lambert and I yeah. love the Highlander movie. Yeah, and it was with, and it was uh, Josh Brolin was in it. and um, And uh, some really great actors. And anyway, Did so, you ever cast your father in any of your films? Yeah, my my brother Darren did, and I rewrote one of his films. And my nice. dad was in. anyway. So I'm on the set of uh, writing Tank Girl, rewriting um, the the circus film that I wrote for Spoon Spielberg, which is and William doing, the Magnificent. Yeah, and then, is that right? Uh, yeah, William the Magnificent, and writing and on the set writing Road Flower, which became the Road Killers. It got it got this. They would. It was originally a cool artistic movie, and then was Miramax like got Max scared. Five? No, it's more like the family on the road and then, you know, these gangsters like screw them up. So like California? Kind of that kind of vibe, yeah. Was that the movie that Brad Pitt? Yeah, yeah, Lewis with the K, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dark, dark road trip. Yeah, so these, this is my life. I was just <laughs> writing, 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 writing. But that's got to take you stuff. through like you're now you're 30. <laughs> yeah, well then I got, I got, um, um, I remember they came to me and said, hey, we want you to rewrite this, uh, this cop movie. I'm like, oh God, is it a cop in this guy kind of a movie? And um, so I read, I read. Is it Robocop? Re no, no, it was Rush Hour. Great movie. So, so I remember they brought me in to rewrite Dude, Rush okay, Hour. I'm embarrassed. Yeah. That I didn't know that you'd done all these movies. Yeah. Well, I I'm, mean, I knew I'm, you had done films. I'm really offended that you didn't know well, this no, no, about me. No, no, I knew me. you had done films, but for some reason, I thought you did like an Alien versus Predator movie. Or one of those types oh, of movies. Yeah, no. And I don't know why it was something, I thought it was something in the Alien franchise. And I thought, oh, that's super cool. It's a fucking sci-fi and I love that. And he did that. But dude, this is way cooler. I mean, it's like Rush Hour is a great movie. Tank Girl is a great well, movie. Well, I didn't get credit on Rush Hour. What happened was um, it, was originally, Fuck them. it was originally at Disney. Well, you know, you can put a lot of you in a movie and not get credit in Hollywood. There's a lot of movies out there that the writer list would go down to here, but only if you get, get credit. It's pretty common. In my last podcast, we were talking about how L.A. isn't a soul-crushing town and how it's really easy oh, town to conquer. It's hard. And I've been here 40 years. I was born here. My yeah. parents moved away now. I was two. Came back when I was 26. I found it easy for me. I was like... Pfft. Yeah, LA, whatever, no big deal. But you know, how, you know how I got the job to rush rush hour? That's kind of funny. I was in the rotunda at Disney because originally it was going to be Walt Disney. Ru uh, rush hour was originally about a terrorist closing down all the freeway systems during the most worst during rush, rush the hour. worst rush hour, and um, and uh, anyway, so I created that xenophobic relationship. I, I I expanded upon it and and I talked to them about that relationship by describing the scene when they're in the car singing war. And, and I, so I did the scene in the rotunda that, and I'm singing loudly and he goes, no, he's like singing, whoa, well, what is it good for? And just like, <laughs> and loud, loud as he could. And everyone's looking at me and I had them in stitches. I you love know? it so and, much. And that's in right there. They go, you got the job. <laughs> I love it. And that's it. how I got it. So I did the rewrite on that. But See, then, you say you're shy. I think you're fearless. 
it didn't get greenlit by because he go, oh, Jackie Chan, they'll never make money. So then the um, the studio we executive put turn around. Him. It went to it went to New Line, and I was supposed to rewrite it and turn it into a small movie. Favorite film, but company. I got offered to do Dinotopia, which was a two hundred million dollar film at Sony, which had a director on it. So I said goodbye to that. I didn't go home. The two hundred million dollar film film getting made. Rush Hour got made, and I I didn't fight for credit. And so, so to anyway, Jackie Chan, it was an Fucking awesome best. film. Awesome film. Badass. I should I should have hung with that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened to Dinotopia? Dinotopia was this huge. It was actually very much like um, um, Avatar. It was the same thing. Oh, where you had the flying. Cool. You had to connect. Did with you ever the, meet James Cameron? Huh? You ever meet James Cameron? I've never met James Cameron. I dig him. No. Dig never. Him. Well, met maybe him. you should do a Avatar-like movie. Yeah. Or maybe you just do Teddy's version. I, I, I Take girl meets avatar. <laughs> I don't point, even know. At this but point, I, anyone wants to hire me, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is so. This is yeah. So, this is kind of was my life, yeah. You know? And then so interesting. And then thing. I got then I got the job. I, I wrote. A, I did another big bidding war in this thing called the Metalheads for Universal United Artists, which was very much kind of became. We, the Transformers kind of a thing, oh, and that I took out. There was a that. scene that Hoover Dam. All that I had that in my script. Dude, and who I stole was before, your idea? I was before that movie. Someone read your script and stole the idea. But they loved it so much that the executive was working for Mario Casari and Andrew Vanya said, "Hey, we're going to do Terminator 3. Um, um, Teddy Serafian, how, let's have him come on in, be one of the, and he's on the shortlist. This is a really high priority, high profile thing." And I, I remember going in there to pitch it, and a bunch of writers, big writers, rough for it. And um, and I'm sat there in the room, and I said, the lights go out, and you hear, dum da dum da dum da na na And I started singing it, and I fucking pitched it, and I got it. Yes! And I wrote Terminator 3. The, that, the draft that, Okay, the, that's probably my confusion. The guy, Alien Arnold versus Predator was Terminator 3. Yeah. I, I, I'm slow. Came up with the female... Uh, uh, no, actually, no. The female Terminator idea was uh, uh, James Middleton said we want to do a female Terminator, and I, I love that idea. And then I brought, I was brought in um, this uh, very, very smart man who works at JPL Laboratory. Was it Linda Hamilton that was in Terminator? She didn't do Terminator Three because she had, you know, she didn't want James Cameron, you know, to piss him off. And they said you're not going to get Arnold, but Arnold liked my script and did the film. And we, we and the him. budget, and the budget happened with my. Do we script. love him? He is the nicest, the nicest guy. guy on the neighbor. planet. I remember when I met him. You could be my neighbor. Here's a, here's a funny story. I'm walking over from WME or William Morris at the time. Oh. And we're walking to Cafe Roma. And the agents are talking to me saying, don't say this. Don't do that. Don't look in the eye. Genuine flesh. Oh, but, Jesus uh, Christ. Don't do this. If he says this, say yes. And they're, and they're like filling me with all this fear. fear. Yeah. And I just remembered when I met with Steven Spielberg, I was so afraid I barely spoke. And I said, F that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do. Be I'm gonna be so I sat down with him. He goes, I don't know about this scene. Well, in the ghost god and this, and he starts talking to me, and I looked at him and I said, you know what? I said, I think it's gonna work, and here's why. And I pitch him the scene and why it was so cool. And then he looked at me and he got up and he and he left. Oh shit. And now they're looking at me like, what's... Well, you fucked up, you yeah. You idiot! You know, and my heart's beating. Honored. My heart's beating. He walks back with this little notepad. He goes, and I, you know, it's one oh. thing I was thinking, because I wrote down some notes, and I like that. And he suddenly, oh. we were best friends, and he goes, oh. and I love the idea. And he goes, she'll be back. He starts reading dialogue from my script. I and I'm love thinking, it. And suddenly, he wanted me to... There were some other projects. He brought me in as somebody who kind of helped ghost write them, fix them. I was working. Did you work on True Lies? Because I love it. I did not work on True Lies. Um, See, it would have been better if you had. Would have been a better movie. That's uh, what I'm saying. Well, you but know. But BP was they, in it. They like had, I thought that movie was plenty fine without Pretty me. Pretty good. It's a good movie. <laughs> yeah. So, blah, 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 blah. so I, I'm writing. It's interesting. You don't think it's interesting because it's your life. But to people <laughs> listening to this or watching this, there you go. Wait a minute. So this guy plays in a band. And then he quits the band and he starts <laughs> writing, but he can't write and he figures out how to write. And now he's in room with Steven Spielberg <laughs> and now he's hanging out with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And dude, trust me, it's interesting. So oh, keep going. <laughs> well, so at that point, I'm now on like, I'm on the short list. So I'm going into rooms and it's such a weird thing as a writer back then. You walk into a room and they're pitching new projects. I think after that, I came in, I, I wrote Creature from the Black Lagoon for Gary Ross, which was a losing situation because his father wrote the original. So no matter what I did, it wasn't good enough. I have a poster of that yeah. in my laundry room, the original. Yeah. And then um, it's such a great film. 
I Dude, it's a great movie. fucking movie. And yeah. I grew up in the land of swamp in Charleston, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. And those of you who are from South Carolina, this is not a disparaging mm-hmm. remark because I love Charleston. But when I was younger, because I grew up on the water and the marsh and the swamp, yeah. we always, those are the movies that scare me the most. Yeah. The movies where the, the creature from the Black Lagoon, it's, it's happening. Yeah. It's coming up. Yeah. You know, you're going to be, and then, you know, I was also doing a lot of acid, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But yeah, so you did. So, you, so I, I was doing movie after movie after movie, and it was always the same thing. I, they were always putting me on these giant movies that almost got made, that almost got made. They, and I and I was spending my whole life on the one yard line. Now, and, do you have an agent a, as a writer? Or oh who yeah, an agent. The you got a ma- agent. You have a manager. You have a thing. You have. A, Are you they get, trying to keep the this from happening? But at the end of the day, you get three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> When it's, it's, everybody takes isn't share. it their job to stop this from happening isn't it their job to see that teddy's movies get made you know it, it's it is what it is i i was i wrote sinbad for uh sam raimi oh. um and um based Dude, on the your, original is no, so great i wrote sinbad for john singleton who did bellies in the hood and then yeah. hutch parker the president of fox says hey i want you to write the sam raimi thing he wrote a script. We don't love it. And then we like your uh, ideas. And so I this got the job. So this is and, crazy. And then that didn't happen because of this, that, and the other. And it kept going on and on and on and on. Finally, I'm in the room at Universal. And they pitched, these guys pitched me something. And I just kind of said, I'm going to repitch it to you. And I pitched back the whole movie in a different way. And they looked at me and said, you got the job. I walked out of there. My agent called me up. He says, job's yours. And that's getting paid a lot of money. Too much money. And, um, that's not really a thing. Though, by yeah. The way. <laughs> at that point. And then, um, I said, I don't want to do it. I want to direct a movie. And then I just stopped writing and I didn't want to do it anymore. And I directed Aww. some awful horror film and, and then got cold and realized how, <laughs> how stupid I was because <laughs> I had a great thing. And I'm like, but, but meanwhile, I was so into music. And during that time, I was you didn't make, get blacklisted I was you make, as a writer. No, you just, when you get cold, you get cold. And when you're not, you're not even mean cold. You're not hot anymore. Yeah, yeah you know, you're not. Yeah, suddenly, yeah. You're not that wonder kind boy in the meeting. You know, when you jump off a train, it's really hard to get back on. <laughs> <laughs> it's really easy to jump off. <laughs> you probably will get killed. Tuck and roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tuck and roll. Um, so then, to then I got, I, I, you know, I had the money. I was buying, you know, lots of great. I was always into buying recording gear, but I was such a snob because I was making so much money. I'm like, what's the best? And I get in gear sluts. And oh, I'm yeah. like, oh, this is the best. That's the best. This is the best. And that's the best. And then you meet the guys from Vendor King. <laughs> yeah, then then I'm I'm just buying all this gear, all this gear. God, I had all I had all the good stuff, Fairchilds and Neves and all the good stuff. I was a spoiled brat. We're in a, we're in a nice recording studio right now. We're sitting in the lobby of East West. This and, place is iconic, yeah, and you're iconic. Oh, you're, you're you know, Thank and you that. that's why I, I don't I, think I'm that's true. Anyway. to be here. <laughs> and so that that's when I started. That's when I segued into music. Music, and then I was online and. I, I was really interested in this one guy who made recording speakers and he had this website and it was good, Thomas Barefoot. Dad loves and this. I'm like, I want what are these speakers? These look really cool. And it's kind of a weird, there is a, a kind of a weird spiritual path that you go on life and you don't know why, but you do. The, the universe and I don't just know, does stuff. It's going to take you there yeah. whether you want yeah. to or not. But next thing I know, um, a friend of mine says, hey, you know, I have those barefoot speakers, uh, the, the first version and of the And this is after you've already looked at them. No, no. I, I just was online. I was looking. Right, I, right. Bought, I bought some other speakers from another brand company um, and um, a very hot brand company. And um, I didn't love the way those speakers sounded. Um, and I was always interested in this and something kept drawing me to this. A friend of mine says, hey, I, I'm on eBay. I, I'm not going to be able to take these speakers. Do you want to take over the auction? And I'm like, yeah, called my buddy. I said, hey, you know those speakers I bought by this little, some company? You want to buy them? He goes, sure. And, and I said, done. Take over the auction. Well, speakers. I bought the op- I bought the speakers. They showed up. They were so heavy. I could not lift them on. <laughs> I've had people come I'm to your house. I'm a guy. So like you are. I've had people come to your house, and I think I had to send two people to borrow a set of speakers from <laughs> you at one point. These yeah. are heavy. Yeah. So I got them on there, and I'm like, and then I turn them on, only one worked. I'm like, oh, no, fuck. God, not what I do. This is like what I was afraid of. I say look at the cable. I say it's not the speaker. <laughs> it was, I say it's the input was, on your stereo. It was a or spe- the output. It was a speaker. Oh. And But for one glorious moment, for some reason, you know, the gods... It, they worked. And I said, that's the sound. You know, it's so interesting that's that you say this. So obviously yeah. I've been working in studios for a long yeah. time. 
and speakers are probably one of the most subjective things yeah. that, that as a tool that, yeah. uh, that an engineer or an artist will ever use. And these things on our head, our ears, um, there, we only have the ones we have. Uh-huh. We have only have the ones on our head. <laughs> That's the only reference we have. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have their, other people's ears. We just have these. Yeah. And different things will speak to different people. Women hear different frequencies than men. Uh, you know, higher frequencies, things like that. But when you're talking about the level that you're talking about, and I'm going to name drop because I think it's apropos that when you're talking about ATCs and you're talking about barefoot and you're talking about at this level, it's a rarefied air. Yeah, this is rarefied air. This is, this is, you know, this is not, you know, when I first started out my Alan Heath, you know what I mean? God bless Alan Heath. But this, this is, this is a different level and it's so subjective. And in a commercial facility like this, you have to have options for people. And I got to tell you, the barefoots get requested all the time. Oh, that's awesome. All the time. They get used all the time. And, you know, there's ATCs, there's Dine Audios, KRKs were in fashion. Remember when you were talking about, like, you're a writer and you're hot and then you're cold? Mm -hmm. Things go in and out of vogue. Yeah. You know, as it were. Um, PMC got in bed with Atmos, with Dolby. And so a lot of the Atmos rooms, I don't have an Atmos room, but a lot of them are PMC. Fine speakers, not my jam. Not my thing. They're not my thing. Yeah. They're not. I love you guys. Maurice, you guys are fab. It's not my thing. Yeah. The little barefoots that you had, I'm not just fucking blowing smoke up your ass. <laughs> when I was at NAM this year, and I went to your booth, oh, and your super cute niece was working the booth. Oh, Indi- the Footprint of Threes. Indy, yes. Indy. And this is in a convention hall, and I'm being mean, being obnoxious, but I walked over, and I'm like, oh my God, these are so good. Yeah. I love them. So I'm gonna get. I gotta get a pair. That, that needs Whoa, to happen. Oh, I got you covered. That yeah, needs to happen. It, it, we. I thought I would sell X amount of speakers it, it, this year. I sold that amount of speakers in one month. At now, and from the exposure. It, now. It's. It, I. I'm right now. I'm trying to I'm desperately trying to figure out how to scale Back production to because the, the orders are just coming in for those speakers because the review. I don't. We're not even talking about it, but the the it's crazy. Oh, this is a good thing. This it's is crazy. There's, this is nothing. And I got the, nothing the big, wrong with success. Now we're I scared of the phone success. Call from from major dudes like but they're like I want those features. Yeah, now we're scared <laughs> of the success. CLA but uh, and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I love him so. Yeah. Uh, with Chris Lord Algae, so so so. Yeah, big. getting to get some. To but Chad. again, what's what's so great yeah. about the people that work in 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 my world and now your world? Yeah. Um, is that these guys can have anything they want. Chris Lord Algae, Tom Elmhurst, one of my favorite mixers, Spike Stent. Mm-hmm. And they get, yeah. they get used to a certain Spike's thing. Awesome. And it's there. It's, he's amazing. Yeah. I love, he's a good friend. Yeah. And, and they get used to a certain thing and it is refreshing and it is a testament to the product that they're willing to try something new. You know, because when they're in a comfort zone, you don't want to get out of your comfort I'll, zone. I'll, I'll tell you a story. You know? So here, here I am, I'm thinking, okay, I call my friend Mike Nira, who you know, owns Vintage King, and I said, you know, um, I just drove out to San Francisco. I can totally see you guys going out and bagging women together, but go ahead. <laughs> you had the wrong impression of me. <laughs> I, am- I have a lot of faith in Ted. He's happily um, married now, though. <laughs> um, I uh, um, called him up. I said, hey, he, you know, I had just had this thing, and I met this guy and the speakers. Would you carry him? He goes, yeah, they're good. You know, if you get some... Buddy, you know, tells so tells me you know, they're that great. They're okay. So I know one guy, and that's Mark Lynette. Mark I love Lynette, him so Mark much. Lynette, Beach you know, Boys Beach engineer, Boys Brian and, Wilson's engineer. And he was selling Fairman gear, which was super, super expensive gear that I, I could afford. So I, that's how I met him because I was interested in buying that gear. I know Mark for a I long said, time. I said, Mark, I got these speakers. Check them out. You want? He goes, Teddy, I'm so busy. I got the Tannoy, the, the thing, the little crossover lab. Like, I got the Adams. And, I and, got the, and, yeah. And, uh, and I said, you need, I said, Mark, but I become really good at pitching. You, you know? were a good salesman. I had to learn. I, I would teach pitching to USC film students. And I, 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 I should they take would, the class. They would brought, bring me in to teach it. So I'm like, Mark, and I would do my pitch. I do my pitch. I like, Teddy, I, I said, Mark, I'm going to set them up for you. I'm going to hook them up. It's going to be so easy. I'll come in there Sunday. I, you need to hear You sound these, like buddy. You're you need love to it. hear the speakers because... The, I think there's something very special. Uh, special about these and you need to pay attention to this and I want you to be the guy. And so he said, okay, I leave him with the speakers, I set them up, put them on this killer white API console, calls me back two days later and goes, can you leave with me for another day? 
you know, could you leave me another week? Oh, I Can you leave it. me another week? He goes, all right, how much are they? Aww. So I call Mike Nira up at Vintage King. I'm like, hey, so Mark Lynette likes these things. We can send, send them over. I send Did them I over. meet you early on in your barefoot journey? Uh, no. You, no, I was kind of uh, on the way at that point. Okay. Anyway, so he put them on his website. Now, now, here I am going from a guy that knows nothing about writing, becoming a writer. Oh, yeah. I know nothing about business. And now you're an audio My, my okay. theory called me up and goes, so what's the margin on these speakers? And I'm like... Margin? <laughs> margarine? What do we, you don't put butter on these speakers. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> um, so, you know, now, so I had to take a crash course in becoming a CEO and running a, running a business. So, um, but it's been a real slow burn. I mean, it wasn't like... We came in here and we just flooded it with money. We went. I mean, I literally b did this company with a credit card and just slowly just built it up. My idea was that, hey, you know, we'll, sell, other people a, like we'll me. sell a couple of pairs of speakers a month. How much do I make? You get two, I get two. Okay, well, blah. yeah, that's cool. You know, that'll. That's what I'm know, hoping with the make, podcast, it, by the way. Make, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that'll help. That'll help, you know, with my cash flow situation. And, and, um, and so it kept growing and kept growing and kept growing and kept growing and kept growing. And now it's. Um, Dude. You know, it's and, done and really Thomas well. Is such, Thomas is such a brilliant guy. Really smart. Now, who is, uh, is it a small team? How big is the uh, we're, team? Well, we're growing, you know. Yeah. It's, and yeah, where do you actually about, make there's them? There's about 25 of us now. Oh, man. Where do you yeah. make them? Portland, Oregon. Okay. We've got 15,000 square feet out there. Okay, yeah. Um, but, you know. Oh, dude, we, you're running a company with 25 people now? Isn't it stressful? There's a lot, there's a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, I, I learn, run yeah. businesses for other people. Yeah. That's what I've been doing my whole career. And yeah. I can tell you, like, people joke, like, oh, you're never going to retire. I'm like, I will quit booking time one day, not because I don't love music and because yeah. I don't love the studio, but because the pressure yeah. of running a business for someone else, and I love you, Doug, you're the greatest boss ever, but I never, my own my own expectations of what I want to achieve, I never ever get there in the success of the company, and we're doing okay, yeah. but I never ever get there, and I think that's a driving force, and I'm sure you're a great CEO, because you want to do better. You want it to it be just, great. Yeah, you know, it's just you're always striving. It isn't being more. greedy. You just want to get in the people game. to this thing you that you in, believe. You get in the game, you know. Um, you have a speaker, you know, you're getting it out there. You know, there's competition. You yeah. know, you're doing things. You find you find yourself getting into this kind of um, competitive. You know, all right, well, we're going to do this speaker, and we're going to price it at that point, and then that'll that'll get us. That'll into put this us over here. Yeah. Over here, it'll do that. Then I can do that, and then oh, there's car audio. Oh, there's lifestyle audio. There's this or that, and then mm -hmm. you see that what the numbers can happen, and then but you're not just it's not just for you, but you have a team. You have people beneath you relying on that, you. that want you know to be able to feed their families exactly. and and buy the car they That's want to get in the their house. Comes in, by the way, yeah, and you want you know, hey, can I get a raise? Can I get a bonus if I do this and this and this? So you start having to be the captain of a team that wants to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, or the a quarterback or whatever. Um, and that's that's the thing. So um, it's exciting and it's exhilarating, but it's stressful. It is, but it is so much fun. It is fun. It's so much fun. But it, it's it, And the it, SBA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they gave me a lot of money, so I, I get it, but ten months, come on guys, that's that's too that's much. Not very long. You should just they should they could look at your they could just go online and just get a snapshot with the company, with the cash flow is, your tax returns are, you know, and all yeah. that stuff, you know, with your, you know, your debt schedule is and say, okay, yes, you can have a loan or no. That's yeah, really, yeah. Just that's good, really good, what it's about. Good waste of my fucking time. Yeah. Just here, just <laughs> sign, sign this document here in blood and let's, let's go do this. Go make, go make your money. But they don't want you to because it'd be too easy for too many companies and you know. Dude, so. how crazy is it that you go from film to speakers? Yeah. But you know what? When you were working in film, the sound was always really important to you, wasn't it? Yeah, I always, I always. Do you remember going to the dome and listening to like Earthquake? Did you ever see the movie Earthquake with all the speakers? I did not. Your seat? Oh, I did not. Well, yeah. but it's I a bummer. That. You would have loved, loved it. I love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've always been just into music and sound, and and always had good ears. I always knew, you know. Um, that, they're kind of big. Yeah, your are ears. They, are they getting kind of big? <laughs> they used to be smaller. No, I think they're fine. Because I got. Uh, <laughs> Because I'm, get, ears are I'm getting older, and you know, I'm starting to start thinking like and, that. You know, that your ears and your nose never quit growing, or something like. that? I know why is that? <laughs> so why did, could it be other things? Because God wants you to be able to smell. I mean, like yeah, 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 in moles and all the wrong <laughs> stuffs growing. You know, like like God, come on, let's let's rewrite this. There are other things. Oh my God. Um, so yeah. Um, what is the model number of the new smaller speaker? Okay, so we came out. 
we we everyone wanted to have the more affordable barefoot. You know, our speakers are priced for you know crazy audio people file. audio. You know, yeah. So Thomas came up with the idea of doing a thing called Footprint, which is our sub brand. So it's not going to have the super super high end components. It's sort of like you go from an S class Mercedes you know, or to, uh, you know, an e, I drive a to an, to an okay. e class, whatever. <laughs> um, but so we, we came up with this product, um, that, which has our dual force technology with the two speakers, you know, are uh, work together and they eliminate cabinet vibration. Um, and so we came out of the footprint of one, which you can be was naughty. extremely, it's not, I mean, you could be naughty, nerdy, yeah. Yeah. weird. <laughs> it's an audio podcast. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. The dual force, we eliminate the vibration at the source. <laughs> Um, it, and, uh, so then we came out of that. It was wildly successful. And then we, uh, figured out how to come up with the footprint. So the money it was well spent at NAM. Yeah. So we went for 4,000, which we upped it to 4,500. So down sales actually, cause we just couldn't make them. So now footprint 03 is 2000. Now the footprint, I mean, footprint 02 is 2000. The footprint 03 is 1995 pair. You get so much speaker for that thing. And we, and we, we play a trick on you. This speaker is so small looking that you think, wait a minute, how is that much sound coming out of the speaker? But but Thomas shaves off millimeters and does things and he knows exactly how small he can go before we start is diminishing. Thomas on the spectrum? Thomas is just a <laughs> brilliant guy. The guy worked at uh, Intel uh, uh, building semiconductor. He's like super, so he's a, he's a physicist. Not casting the He's so not a- thinking uh, about uh, David Royer because there's a lot of people that are that creative and yeah. that anal that are yeah. kind of like, He's just, he's Not a, a he's a scientist. I mean, he, yeah. you should see his, like he does mathematical equations. We got back to Teddy getting yeah. a B plus in physics. I know. Because speaker design yeah. is heavily physics. Yeah. Seriously. Well, we connect on that level, except he's slightly smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but we're, it's a really interesting relationship because I am good at, you know, the money, the relationships, the artist thing, hanging out with Steven Tyler and like making the schmooze and making it happen and, and going, 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 going. And Thomas is always a little more low key. And he, you know, he didn't want to give the speakers to celebrities. He's like, well, why do we have to do that? And I said, trust me, trust me. Let's, you know, and the word of mouth. It. Yeah. It's a good thing. So, so he and I are very opposite, but, but it's symbiotic. It's, we, we, um, it works. He appreciates it now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's it's, I mean, it's you, exciting, and made, it's going to get a lot more exciting. We, you've made it. Uh, you know, I say household name. You've made it a name in our world. It's not that easy to break a new product, like you said. It's rarefied air. You're going up against companies that have millions of dollars, yes. and you got this little speaker. Yeah. And you're operating on. You know, at, when we started, just um, you know, it was small amount. Everyone I mean, that listens to this and watches this is going to go out and want to check it out. I, I guarantee it because well, they, because yeah. the trust comes into play. Yeah. Just hearing about the journey and how you got there. They're going to be like, oh my God, this is like a real guy. And he really cared about this thing. And he made we it happen. We cared because Thomas and I, we did, we came together. We're like, look, we're not, um, we, we, we want wheel. to make money, but we, we're, we're more interested in doing the best thing we can. The exciting thing about Barefoot is just building the, the excellence behind it. Yeah. And, you know, and that's what we want to give you. So the, the, from the, our, from our master stack speaker, which is like a $55,000 for a pair all the way to the footprint 03, that footprint 03, that took us years and years. It's got patented technology, um, this thing called Spock, what we do is- Oh, what's Spock? Spock is called spectral optimal conversion. Okay. Normally when you go to an AD converter, you got to attenuate the signal and then you process it and then you go back up and then you, you lose all this bit yeah. resolution. Well, you really don't have to attenuate the highs and the mids, just the base because the base sample, the waves are like that. So we do an analog crossover. We let the base, we attenuate the base signal, you know, and do that. But the highs and the mids, the only thing that really matters because that's where the distortion, that's where you hear it, goes straight across. And that's our patented, that's our technology. Which would make sense why people would be able to use this speaker. So a lot of time what happens with an engineer, a mixer, is yeah. they'll get fatigued. Yeah. And so in this case, what you're describing would keep fatigue from happening. Yeah. And, and it, uh, Listening higher fatigue. bit resolution is always a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, it makes it, makes it less coarse. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. Well, you know, there's all, uh, Atmos is all the rage, of course. Uh, I don't have an Atmos room here. I respect all technology i respect new innovations things like that i've yeah. seen a lot of things happen in the course of my career that 
didn't last or didn't sort of make the long haul. Yeah. You know, I, I think for me, for me, I know it's not channel based. I know it's object based. But for me, things like that really work with film mm -hmm. because if it was just for music, I never understood how I listen to music in my car a lot. And I never understood how, like, I was going to be where the safety brake was in the middle of my car because, you know, you're driving on the left hand side <laughs> of your car. Or but you can change that. I know, I know. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, it never yeah. really made sense to me. Right. And I also don't really like, um, and I've said this before, it's probably not a popular thing to say, but I don't like being on the stage with the instruments around me I like audience perspective when I listen to music mm -hmm. and lately I, I was just championing the fucking amazingness of mono all the way full circle back to talk about Mark Lynette and listening to the Beach Boys that was done here in Studio 3 and listen mm -hmm. to that in mono and then listen to like Mamas and Papas in mono and how clear and how amazing it is and then listen to stereo and went okay the stereo is pretty fucking amazing too but I don't personally need 75 speakers i'm good with two mm -hmm. you know and again when it comes to film that's an immersive experience right i'm not a gamer i know that's an immersive experience right. i know that's cool and everything you could use barefoot's totally in atmos and atmos configuration we do we've done many atmos that would be rooms. amazing yeah and i think that anything I'm trying to spit out is that anything that inspires creativity is a good thing. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. Doesn't matter I, how you I get like there. I like quadraphonic. I mean, I think they're that the quad was rad. That's cool. But you know, I'm I'm here listening to you talk. I'm hearing music there. The yeah, the there's a lot there. going there's on. Traffic. In but that's part. That's actually the way things just happen. That's so life. to create that experience in a studio is really cool. We have a. Um, a new product, uh, the subwoofer that we've been working on for so long, but it's going to be coming out uh, in June called the LFE 15, which is just this powerful um, lo low How frequency. How big is the sub? It's like, you know, like that. It's, it, it's, so a, like an 18 it's inch, dual 15? 15s. Okay, and dual it 15s. Is, we took it to NAM one time and the thing just shook the whole thing. But Great. I've heard an Atmos room with this thing in it. Amazing. Um, a prototype. And it, it, it's, uh, it's fun. It's, I, I like, I like. Well, you know, we talked yeah. about this. If I ever do. If I ever yeah. do an Atmos room, it, it'll be, I'll pitch the bear. Let's plan. do it. I will Let's, pitch the bear. We'd plan. love to be part of it. Yeah. I think um, people that are, again, we're trying to focus on the journey. We've mm -hmm. skipped all over the place. Mm -hmm. So are you ever going to write a film again? I'm actually, I'm working I on wondered. something really cool. There's a book. Um, that I've been wanting to write. Um, and I was working with this guy, Danny Sugarman. Danny Sugarman wrote No One Here Gets Out Alive. Okay. He also wrote a book called Wonderland Avenue, which is a true story. Oh, I know. The coming days story. So and that was a book that I, Oliver Stone... But it wasn't about the Wonderland murders, was it? No, no. Wonderland <laughs> Avenue. He lived on Wonderland Avenue. My Danny, friend lives on Wonderland now. Clark, yeah. He's an engineer. Yeah. It's a... It's, Off of Laurel Canyon. It's a cool place. Wonderland's up there. It's a cool place. Oliver Stone went for it. David Fincher went for it. I got the rights. I love I just, it. I just wrote with uh, my partner, uh, who is Danny Cannon. Danny Cannon is like this big showrunner, producer, CSI, directed oh, okay. 30 or 50 episodes of that, and, and Pennyworth and a million things. And he's like a, he's a great writer. I've teamed up with him. And he and I, uh, we just handed off episodes back and forth. We've written half the book. Um and um, we're, is it going to be a movie or is it going to be a series? We're doing it as a, a series. We okay. just we just gave the project to uh, to this huge producer, um, eight thousand pound gorilla, and um, Ryan you know, Murphy. And then um, yeah, so yeah. so that's that's out there right now. But this is something I've been wanting to do. I was really excited about, and I told Danny. Yeah, he he read this um, comedy action thing that I'm out with right that's now. Someone practicing for vocals. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> practicing for singing. Yeah. That's what that is. That's someone practicing for singing. Okay. Yeah. That's how you practice. You, you trill. <laughs> Love that. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, it's not a bird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I have this. I have a few, I have a few other things too. I, I just wrote a science fiction film and that Mario Casari, who I wrote Terminator 3, 4, he's out with some guys. And so Dude, I love we'll this. see, okay, so. but I, but, but I find it as the bigger the company gets, my job actually becomes more about making the tweaks and steering the ship and then watching it go there. Like, okay guys, we're going to do it's like delegate. the footprint 03 now. And then all my teams that, that are all better and smarter than I am, I just watch <laughs> them go. And I said, okay, let's shift this. It's like, yeah, very subtle moves. So I have the time. So I've been writing more lately. Dude, I want to get back this. into it. I love 
this yeah. so much. I'm, I, mm-hmm. I can't. I want to hear it. Well, the the young lady that was just here that you yeah. met very briefly, yeah. the, Ashley Arison, who used to work for me at Cello, blah blah blah. blah mm-hmm. She now works at Netflix and is in charge of series production yeah. at Netflix. That's awesome. So maybe. I don't know. We'll yeah. see who gets the well, series. I'm the first, yeah. What's it what's the series gonna be called? So oh, it's called Wonderland this Avenue. It's an NDA, by the way. Verbal it, NDA. It's 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 fine. <laughs> Wonderland Avenue. And um it's it's a true story. Coming of age story. About Danny Sugarman, who was who grew up in uh, you know a very wealthy, kind of privileged family, didn't connect with the style and kept on and saw a role he saw a concert by the doors. Fell in love with the music Hence and Jim Morrison. Suddenly he became, he says, I got to be close to this band. I'm going to go move Suddenly to Laurel Canyon. He was like working for the Doors, answering fan mail, well, became their this. publicist, what? became their manager after Jim died. Oh, that's died. right, that's right, that's right. And it became very, you know, into the whole, you know, opulent lifestyle, the drugs, the excess, and all that stuff. It, but, but the film has Iggy Pop. And it is, I, when you read this book, you, I mean, I, you just can't stop. You can't put it down. It just, you, you can't believe this stuff happened. It is the most exciting thing. And I, I and I remember. And when, it's his life story. More it's his life story. Yeah. And uh, so it's based on, on this guy's coming to a story, how Jim, a, a different version of Jim Morrison. You're seeing Jim Morrison through the eyes of, of, a, a, boy, of a kid. And Jim Morrison took this boy on as his protege. And so the, you are seeing, you're seeing the child of Jim Morrison because he was connecting with Danny, taught him about literature, taught him about writing, taught Talking about all this kind of stuff. Jim, had, Jim it's was so nothing cool. if not a poet. That's what he Jim wanted Wilson. to do. That's really yeah, what he, he was. was a poet. Pam wanted him to be a t- curse on one and be a poet. But it's it's so I'm just so excited it's about this. He's our American Rambo. So I'd like to see this get made. I love poetry. I would love it. I'd like to see this get made. Hopefully it will. Wonderland Avenue. <laughs> Wonderland Avenue. It's fun. Well, I think yeah. I think this is so, what I want to see happen is William the Magnificent comes back around. <laughs> I love is that there, one. Is there, is there a way? Maybe if I run into Steven Spielberg one day, I can talk to him about like where, it. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess my question is like, where is it this gray so box? Good. Where is this black hole of stuff that like doesn't get made or developed? Like, is it like, I don't know how to compare it because what happens in recording studios is people leave their two inch masters yeah, and they leave them here. Yeah, Like I, it's 20 years later and yeah. it's like, can you please come get your stuff? That's what happens. You know, and then you just have it. So where... I know. Is William the Magnificent? <laughs> I love. The, Where's I, the script? Do you I have know. it on where, a hard drive. Where is it? And my my version of uh, I, I wrote Arabian Nights for Sam Raimi. Oh, gotcha. um, For 20th Century Fox, and I, it literally I, I look I look at it as like it was Braveheart in the Sand. I, it was one of the best <laughs> things I've ever it. written. It was a beautiful love story. It was so fun, and uh, just. Nothing. Where does, is there a big closet at Warner Brothers? Is there a storage unit? I'm sure full it is. Of scripts. And to get into it, it's going to cost a few bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full of, full That's of scripts. It's called putting something in turnaround. Like, oh, we'll give that to you, but here's here's putting the bill. Putting something in turnaround. Yeah, turnaround. Is well, that the language? They're the going to put all their Film fees, lingo? all their fees that they spend for all that stuff, and the fees are in the millions. Is so this if when you they turn it, the baby into a shoe? They do not <laughs> want it becoming successful, and they didn't do it because then people get fired. So it's going to cost you a lot of money. Well, it's kind of like A&Rs who want A&R yeah. guys at labels who want to find right. the next big band based on the band that's big right now. Yeah. Like we got to make it so like when Guns N' yeah. Roses came out when it's, I was a young manager, it was like all the bands they wanted. And well, first of all, they're not going to sound like Guns N' Roses because Slash is amazing and an individual in his own right. But they all want to stay with that formula. Yeah, that's why oh, music has is, become a palimpsest. Yeah, really like this has. was successful. Yeah. So we're going to do this again. Yep. But yep. movies are the same. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's we're the limiting thing. ourselves artistically, that's, people. That's the thing. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did it. <laughs> it's good. It's going to come into place. Thank I, you for having me on. No, no, I had I'm the not, best time. We could do another one. I mean, you see how easy it goes here? It's fast so much it fun. Yeah. So I just want to. What an interesting story. Like, yeah. again, I learned so much about you. I, I love you. Always love you. And Feeling so mutual. fascinating. So incredibly cool. Yeah. And now I'm like, Totally brokenhearted for all these films, all these babies that are shoes. That's not right. They made a shoe box. Them. Hey, Tank Girl got made. <laughs> yeah, Tank Girl was red. So I want to. I just want to thank you for your time and your well, insight, you. and I thank you for caring. And I'm gonna make you do it. <laughs> what You're am I gonna, gonna do? sign off. Oh, I love Teddy's Christopher Walken. Uh, this is embarrassing because she thinks I do a good one. On a scale of one ten, I gave it a five. Okay. Kindness. How about your film? Ted. Kindness. The problem with film in Hollywood for me is like, that's it. Done. That's all you're going to get. Eddie, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for having me. Uh, I had a so great much for time. Trade Secrets.
And, and thanks uh, to the yeah. crew for yes, thank for you, being thank you, Keith. such pros. Oh, you guys yeah. are amazing. And uh, now we're gonna eat sushi because this is Hollywood. Let's do it. Thank you. Awesome. awesome.